It's okay. Don't feel guilty that you're doing something for you or you're spending money investing in your own health. When we invest in ourselves, everything else gets better. All right. Welcome back, Art Debbie. So we had a great session talking about weight loss resistance, what happening when you're gaining weight without doing anything different, and some of the red flags that we should be aware of because that are part of the contributing factor to that. Right now, I want to talk about burnout. And you had mentioned in our last episode, our last segment, that you know, your experience with, with that being a elite athlete training for Ironman and then actually burning out in yeah, the best shape of your life, technically, right? I was in the best shape of my life. And, you know, I, I just feel like on this mission since then, and it's finally to this year, I'm able to follow that passion. I feel like it's my, I have this perp, you know, you have a sense of purpose and it's to help other people avoid going through what happened to me because I didn't know what happened. That's why I wrote my book, Life is Not a Race, to really process it for myself. Go, where did this even come from? Because I was going, you know, top racing in my age group and doing Ironman Hawaii, I was lean and strong and fit and felt invincible, superhuman, you know, I say, feel like you're a Wonder Woman, that no one can knock you down. And suddenly it felt like overnight that I just went from this high level to rock bottom. And there obviously it didn't happen like that. There's steps, things that went on for years, probably that I didn't pay attention to. I had no idea because you're kind of thriving on that high level. And then you kind of hit those hormones, just go rock bottom. And I think it's so essential to point that out to people and just go, okay, you know, are you living that fast pace of life that you're waking up at, you know, four in the morning and you're not stopping until you get home and hit the pillow, say nine o'clock or 10 o'clock for a lot of people that you're burning the candle at both ends. It's just never ending. Yes. Yeah, that's so true. And that exact example of burning the candle at both ends, right? Mm -hmm. Been there, done that. And then there's the shift in capacity, this yeah. and, and this concept. So when I test like, you know, adrenals, adrenal function, there were many things that we're looking at, B vitamins, organic acids, nutrient status, DHEA. And that's one of the four key essential tests I want everyone to know if we're doing a blood test. DHEAS is one of the numbers I want everyone to know their number. Like I want them to know their hemoglobin A1C, their inflammatory marker of HSCRP and their vitamin D 25 hydroxy. I have, yeah. you know, I've talked about this in prior episodes of, of the girlfriend doctor show. And it's so important to really look at what's happening over time and things that, that really create this kind of resuscitation of the adrenal gland. So what have you found in working with your coaching clients and, and through your own experience too, that have been the biggest needle movers? I, I think it's really just this past year, knowing that, you know, changing your work schedule and prioritizing sleep and I might not have a lot of social plans, but COVID made that easier. But <laughs> just like nighttime during the weekdays, Sunday through Thursday, I'm, I'm strict about going to bed and creating this routine that I do some yin yoga, some gratitude journal I've been writing in every day for almost a year, which is kind of funny to go back and read a year ago <laughs> what was going on, but just writing three things I'm grateful for at night and reading in my book, at least three pages of my goal, and then just creating this relaxing atmosphere and having that, you know, good routine every night. That's been my biggest thing. I think really prioritizing that sleep, as I said before, but also I think for me, it's slowing down and just breathing, right? Just, and just take three deep, long inhales and exhale. You just feel that reset, that shift. And you kind of, I can feel when the breathing gets short, you kind of get in that synthetic dominance phase and you, you just need to have that shift back and recalibrate and just taking a little 30 seconds to a minute, just stop and breathe. And I just, I always think of it as your computer, when your computer doesn't work, what do we do? We push control, delete, reset. And I just feel like we need to do that reset, reboot for our own body. So just slowing down, putting more pauses through the day. Cause I think we kind of tend to be, you know, especially women, we're always going all day long and people that have kids and cooking and house chores and just work and everything is just so hard to just not realize that 
okay, I haven't stopped, you know, just stop and pause. And that's just the biggest thing I've learned. And it's so easy. It doesn't cost anything. <laughs> it's just no gadgets needed, but just know how to breathe. It's crazy. Well, and that's such an important and simple thing that we can do, but yet we don't. I mean, really, yeah. like we don't. So like setting an alarm or something in your phone and that reminder at the top of the hour that we have to do something. And it's hard for yeah. me too. I remember thinking my day is scheduled from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. Like oh, there is no, there was no place to put anything else. And I, I swear I get more done in, in, in a, a tenth of that time now than I, I did then, I think, and mm -hmm. certainly have been more productive and purposeful. But, you know, what do you say to that, that busy woman, that working mom, that, you know, just that <laughs> living with that schedule, 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. Of, of priorities, mm -hmm. of tasks, of to do? Well, I, I keep saying lately, you know, no one, the word health optimization, no one really knows about. It just seems like it wasn't a thing until this year. And, but it's going into what that is about, you know, taking care of yourself. And then I take that. What is that about? Is self-care is self-love and loving yourself enough, caring about yourself to honor your needs and respect what your body's telling you. But first, I guess you have to learn how to pay attention because your body's going to tell you when you need to push that pause button and stop and know when you're going too fast, you need to slow down, you know, put a stop sign in there. And I think that's just the biggest thing is just to maybe journal and even write, you know, what can you do to take care of yourself today? What are three things and, and start doing simple things like that. And then creating those new habits, maybe you need a sticky note or a reminder or, you know, alarm go on to get up and move every two hours if you've been sitting. But I think a lot of times people are just moving all this all the time that they we just put the oxygen max on first because not what women tend to do. They especially people that have kids and family, they're just giving, giving, giving. And so I find that with a lot of my clients, it's just like they feel guilty if they're doing anything for themselves. There's always constant worry for family and for work or other things than themselves. So learning how to Except that it's okay. Don't feel guilty that you're doing something for you or you're spending money investing in your own health and, and then start working on those lifestyle habits because there isn't any magic supplement. You can take all the supplements you want, but if you don't change lifestyle habits and of course what you're eating, it's a long haul. I mean, it's taken me eight years to figure that out. <laughs> so yes. it's taking care of you first. Well, um, how is your life different now, Debbie? Huh. Well, I had a fitness studio, thankfully. I closed October 2019, so pre-COVID, and that was a constant stress for me being a small business owner. You know, what doesn't matter what job I was doing. I was running my own business, you know, training clients, teaching, doing all the back-end stuff, but it was high rent. So that was 10 years of my life of constant worry, constant stress, and that was my big stressor in my life. And I finally was able to close the doors basically because the building was being torn down. So I probably would have still owning because I felt like a failure if I didn't shut it down and move on to follow what my purpose is. And I, that was a big stress, but that kind of led me down the way that I can focus on being a, a health coach full time. And I started to do that before COVID and, and training people, but my life completely changed last year. Cause as you know, I moved from Seattle to North San Diego, where I've always loved, even the cost of living is higher and the, you know, politics are a little crazy sometimes, but I love being where I'm looking out to mountains and I'm 20 minutes to Solana beach and I have that new lifestyle. And that's for me is we call it the, the quality of life move. We were moving to take care of ourselves. And now I can, you know, be in the mountains, I can walk on the beach. And that for me, it was like taking care of my soul and taking care of myself because if I didn't move out of that place where I was, I would have been constantly on and not, I think, ever really healing myself spiritually. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it's that, you know, sharp disconnect, right? And where do we pivot midlife and just think, you know, how we re, you know, 
uh, redefine ourselves or or up level our lives, so to speak, by really tapping into what we love and what our desires are. And I love this quote that's an ancient Middle Eastern quote, or ancient Arabic saying that says, um, when you have your health, you have a million wishes. When you don't have your health, you have but one, right? To have your health. Yeah. And yeah. so it's that important, the yin and yang of um, that mm -hmm. balance of life balance and, and, you know, trusting your intuition, trusting yeah. what your next right exactly. step is for you. I think it's so cool. We're running a parallel. You moved to um, that gorgeous uh, estate in San Diego and I've moved from Georgia to here. I mean, I was not expecting it and certainly not in the middle of a pandemic, but I'm just, I'm just loving it. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I'm glad I have the energy to be able to do this. And, yeah. you know, and it, it, I know many people listening can think, okay, you know, right now there's, there's other stresses that I'm dealing with. Like where, where's the end to the financial stress that the, maybe the mm -hmm. pandemic has brought on or what are those concerns? In Georgia, when it was 2015, 2016, and and we had hurricanes back to back, and I lost 80% of everything. It was near broke. And so redefine having the energy, having the health, having the quality of life to redefine our our next step, to make that next step, to have the energy to and and to establish quality relationships and connections, all of that is invaluable. I was talking with someone today, Debbie, and on a, a phone call, one of our winners in our Keto Green 16 challenge. And um, she said, you know, Dr. Anna, I'm just, you know, worried about, you know, financial and, and how much, you know, it costs to, to invest in my health. And I haven't been really, you know, able to, to add in supplements or what, you know, and I said, you know, what are you dealing with now? And she goes, just chronic, chronic depression and just feeling isolated. So what would your life look like if you had the energy and felt joyful and could, you know, manifest, you know, what, what could you manifest? And she's like, I know what you're saying. And I said, trust me, if I didn't believe it, if I didn't experience it myself, I wouldn't be telling you this. When we invest in ourselves, everything else gets better. And, and with that, I always say, and philanthropy, right? And charity and helping, giving a helping hand to someone else. That is a powerful paying it forward that boomerangs back to us tenfold and it's not the reason to do it of course but it is just 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 do it trust me it works right yeah. and so when we have our health and investing in our health even say okay i'm going to i'm going to take this uh, you know, um, segment these resources for two months to really dive in. I can commit for two months and do it. And she was like, okay, I'll do it for two months. And I, I know in two weeks, you'll be feeling so mm -hmm. much better. And then that's another energy level. And then you're magnetizing more positive things into your life. However, that manifests <clears throat> financially or otherwise, right? Yeah. I think that's an essential part is, is, is putting it out there. If it's writing it down, I, I know we've done that a lot of my business groups is like tapping Tuesdays and, and writing down your goals and just like the tapping the EFT method and different things that we've done just to put it out there in the universe. Like this is what I want to have it happen. And like this year, I want to help people reduce that chronic stress. I want to help them live their best life. And, and especially as I get older, I want to improve the aging process for myself, but how you can live your best life, your second half of your life, and not just blame the aging process, blame your hormones, and think that this is my new normal. This is, you know, I'm supposed to go through menopause and I'm going to feel like crap. And you just set that up. But it's having that positive mindset, positive attitude, creating that positive energy that I'm such a big believer in, and, and keep reminding yourself that because we can just have that negative self talk that just puts you down and it's hard to get out of that. It is. And I always like to say, visualize that example of someone who's 20 years older than you. So like I'm 54, someone who's 74 or older, right? So like, who's that perfect person that's just thriving, you know, or, or even one or two years older than you, right? Who's just like ahead, a step ahead of you. But I think of my Aunt Margo, who's in New York City, she turns 90 this year. And she is, she's just hanging out in New York City. She will walk the park. She 
ballroom dances. She played mm -hmm. tennis until a couple years ago. And I mean, like, I, I think of people like her and I love the, the yogi, this 90 year old yogi that is doing handstands. I'm like, oh. okay, if, if one person can do it, others can do it, right? We mm -hmm. can continue to achieve it. So think in your mind, you know, have that visual of, of someone that you respect, adore, love that is thriving. Mm -hmm. And, and then in, envision yourself like future cast yourself that 10 20 years and it's powerful my father was really good at that because i remember when he was 79 and he was failing fast and his doctors i write about this in my book the hormone fix and his and keto green 16 the the and i have a whole males chapter in keto green 16 and the doctors were just washing their hands of him and i said dad what do you you know like what, you know, are you done living? He goes, no, I'd like to make 80. So he just po focused a year ahead, right? Like to make 80. And then at 80, he's like, I'd like to make 90. He lived to 91, you know? So these little tips, you know, and focusing on the positive and the possibilities mm -hmm. is, is empowerment. And you're a living example of that, Debbie. Tell, tell our listeners how they can coach with you and get your book and connect. With yeah. You. I am on debbiepotts.net. It's my website. My Instagram and Facebook, it's a low carb athlete is my handle. And my book, Life is Not a Race, It is a Journey, is on Amazon, as well as my manual I put together called the Holistic Method Manual and Workbook, working on your inner core and then working on outside like with lifestyle habits to help really teach people to burn fat, optimize health and improve performance. But I'm all about longevity. So I think the main goal we should be looking at is like we just were saying what we wanted, what do you want to be doing and how do you see yourself, your future self? So I think that's so essential to our health is looking ahead and seeing how I want to live my life. Yes. My husband wants to live in Italy half the year. <laughs> so we have to <laughs> see ourselves traveling and hiking the hills in, in Tuscany and the hilltop towns and going to Portofino and Positano and all over. That sounds lovely. I love that. I love that visual. I, lo I just love it. So, well, I want to thank you for being with us today. And I want to thank everyone who's watching here, the Girlfriend Doctor Show. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that bell notification. So you guys, every time we put a new episode, you will be notified. And I love getting your feedback and your comments and your questions. So at dranna.com, on my show page, there is a place you can ask or tell me anything. And there is no no such thing as too much information. So be sure to visit that page and fill that out. I look forward to hearing from you. And till next time. Thank y'all. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel here and get those notifications and comment below. Let me know your thoughts, what you loved, and what your action step is. Mm -hmm.